Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of our Creating Trinkets and Baubles RPG Loot in Minecraft. Last time we talked about making cool items with attributes, such as this fancy piece of armor that does slow you down a little bit when worn, but also has some illegal Minecraft protections on it. Just don't don't tell anyone. Um, you can also do the same kind of thing with weapons. Uh, we had the armor example in the paste bin down from last week. Um, but that's all well and cool, so you can do this kind of stuff uh, to make awesome RPG gear within your series. But for our purposes, we're going to go a step further. Now, in this medium section, we are actually going to learn about offhand trinkets that can give you potion effects when you hold them in your offhand. This could be useful for something like holding a golden carrot in your offhand, and that will give you permanent night vision uh, while players are walking around. Keep in mind, this is kind of limited because there is only one offhand slot, so the way we set this up, even if you have many different trinkets in your world, your players will have to decide what they hold in their offhand, whether it's their normal shield or if they want a specific trinket for a specific quest. Uh, then they can hold that as well. But just like before, we're going to head over to MC Stacker to build ourselves a trinket. Okay, once again, we are in the slash give command on MC Stacker, and we are going to try and make ourselves an offhand trinket that gives the player fire resistance while they're holding it. And as this is kind of a powerful item, as it's pretty much a permanent fire resistance effect as long as they're holding it, we're going to make it in the epic tier, which for us can be purple. So let's go ahead and pick our item. So we'll say Magma Cream, and I wanted to take a moment just to talk about when you select your trinket items for players. Now, obviously, Minecraft has a limited selection of items, so players are going to look at this Magma Cream and go, Oh, I know what Magma Cream's used for. That's used for making fire resistance potions. Of course, that's true. We have a limited library to choose from. So, when making our choice, it's important to pick an item that doesn't really have any other right-click uses in case players accidentally use them. And what I mean by this is, if you try to make a trinket something like a loaf of bread, and a player holds down right-click too long on that loaf of bread, even if it's in their offhand, they're gonna eat it. And that's not gonna make your players very happy. So generally, try and go with the more mundane objects, even if they have crafting recipes, your players can't accidentally right-click something like Magma Cream. So we'll start there, and we'll go ahead and add a name. Uh, and this time, we will call it the Lame Guard Bubble. That seems appropriately fantasy. And like I said, for color, we are going to switch it to Light Purple, as this is going to be in our Epic category. Now, I mentioned before that you don't have to add lore to your items, but I think to let players know what this one does, we will. So we'll go ahead and expand the lore section. And on our first line, we will write what this item does. It provides fire resistance. There we go. And we don't really need to color that. You can if you want, but I won't. And then I'll actually add a second line. So this one happens underneath our first one. And say maybe that it's an offhand item. And this will let the player know that this item goes into their offhand, because maybe we have some trinkets that also go into their main hand. Okay, so that is our name and lore out of the way. We don't need to do anything fancy with that. The only other thing that we're going to do right now on this item is going to give it an enchantment. Now, I know what you're thinking. You don't actually want to add something like sharpness or unbreaking to magma cream. It doesn't make too much sense. So what we're going to do instead is add the glint only effect. Now, I might have mentioned this before, what this actually looks like is when you're adding the enchantment tags to something, it's just an empty array of enchantments right here. You can see a couple of square brackets and then a couple of curly brackets. All this does is Minecraft thinks that there's an enchantment on the item, but doesn't actually have an enchantment to put on there, so instead just gives it that shiny glint. This is a great way to differentiate to your players what is a trinket item and what isn't. Okay. Now, I know what you might be thinking, we added an attribute modifier last time, right? And there is a slot for the offhand. So we could just go in here and pop in the attributes and maybe add some fire resistance when it's in your offhand. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. You see, as I was saying earlier, attributes really only affect statistics about players and entities, and fire resistance is an effect. It's not really a stat of the players. So adding that attribute won't actually do anything so we can go ahead and cancel out of that but as of right now we just have a fancy looking item that doesn't actually do anything so what we're going to do is actually go set up a little command block magic within the game so we'll go ahead and copy and we'll come back into the game here and just like before we will paste it into our command block so we'll go ahead control v there we go you can see that this one is actually much more manageable in the chat and if i press our button oh look at that we get our cool flame guard bubble it says provides fire resistance and an offhand item ah as that text is also purple maybe i'll go back later and change that to like gray or something so it doesn't doesn't kind of conflict 
but that's fine. That's fine for now. So as you can see, I have our Flame Guard Bubble, and if I hold it in my offhand, I, I don't have Fire Resistance, I have nothing. It has the Enchantment Glint, just like we set up, and it has our text, but we have nothing else going on for us right now. Now, in a second, we're actually going to add the effect in a repeating command block. Simple as that, so when the player has something in their offhand, it will actually give them a potion effect. But just before that, I want to actually talk about something that's really important, which is detecting if the player has a certain item or not, which is going to be used in our command block structure here and over there as well. This is actually a really, really important thing to know for command blocks in Minecraft in general, and it's something that I often have to re-Google and bookmark just to remind myself because the syntax can get pretty confusing. There are many videos and comments that go into it in depth, so I'm just going to go over it once here, and if you need to pause the video or find it elsewhere, I recommend you do so to get the hang of it. Basically, what we want to do here is we want to detect when the player is holding the magma cream only in their offhand slot so we know when to give them a potion effect. You can actually do this in a command block and it'll look something like this. We want to use the good old execute command, and for us, it's going to be executing as, at A, as we learned in our selector video, that's all players, and then we're going to open and close the brackets. Now, within the brackets, we are going to say, there's a lot of different criteria here that pop up, but we are looking for NBT. Now, very briefly, if you don't know what NBT data is, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to really do a video delving into NBT data. Basically, NBT stands for Named Binary Tag, or in simpler terms, they are tags that certain entities, items, pretty much anything in Minecraft can have on them to help differentiate different aspects about them. Now, as we are looking at all players holding the Magma Cream, that actually is an NBT tag for them. It's the inventory NBT tag. So what we can do here is we can add a set of curly brackets indicating that there is going to be something within here about our NBT we're looking for. And then the NBT that we want to look at is the inventory NBT. So go ahead and you can write your NBT. You can put a colon and then a set of curly brackets to indicate we're going in deeper. Now, if you're ever curious as to what different NBTs there are within Minecraft entities blocks, there are loads. And I mean loads. You can browse the wiki if you're ever curious, but I wouldn't recommend overwhelming yourself. I would look up very specific ones when you need them and learn them as you go, or you could get overwhelmed very quickly. But for now, just know that we are going to look inside of the inventory NBT data of all players. So now that we're in the inventory, we want to point to the offhand slot to see if the magma cream or this specific magma cream is in their offhand slot. And I also forgot to mention, because this can be an array, we can put in some square brackets in case we want to check anything else within uh, the NBT data of the player. So the first thing we want to point to is the slot. And luckily for us, that is actually called slot. And this is, as far as I can tell, kind of arbitrary. I'm sure there's math as to why it's numbered this, but the offhand slot specifically is negative 106. And you put a B after that indicating bytes. Again, not sure. Uh, I, I did look at, there is a good image of uh, what each slot corresponds to number-wise in Minecraft, but I'm pretty sure the offhand slot is the only negative one. Uh, again, not too sure why that is. Regardless, now we're pointing at the offhand slot. So we can detect if a player is holding something in their offhand. Now we want to look for a specific item. So we want to check the ID of that item. Now because this is going to be a string, we want to add our quotes here. And we're going to type in the namespace, which for us is just Minecraft. And then the actual item itself, colon magma cream. There we go. Now we do have to add a couple more parameters. But for now, I just want to show you what this looks like. So if I go ahead and press done. You can see that that has saved and we have our little button set up. Now, if I go ahead, oh, we actually need to very quickly add a test. So we can say run say true to the end of that to actually detect if our magma cream is being detected. Now, if I go ahead and press this button, you'll notice that nothing pops up in the chat. Uh, don't panic. This is because we actually don't have any magma cream in our offhand slot. So if I go ahead and take this flame guard bubble and press F to put it in the offhand, now I press the button and it says true because we have an item and not just any item, we have magma cream in the offhand slot, which is exactly what we were looking for. Now, before the gears start turning and you think, well, that's enough, we're done. We can detect that magma cream in your offhand slot. So why don't we just move on to giving it the effects? Well, something that you'll run into in your early days of detecting items is this is very easily cheesable unless you become very specific. For example, let's just say we don't have the flame guard bubble. This is something that we're looking for in a dungeon. But we come across some normal magma cream. And I think to myself, hey, 
these are the same item. What happens if I put this in my offhand? All right, so this is just normal magma cream. I hit the button and it still says true. So no matter what I have in my offhand, as long as it's just magma cream, which both of these items are, this will return as true. When we're setting up powerful trinkets to have certain potion effects, this is very easily exploitable. Luckily, there is a way around this, and that is just being more specific with your actual parameters when detecting for an item. So if we jump back into the command block here, you can see we've currently ended after we looked at just the ID for the item. But we can go a bit further to detect the exact item that they're holding in their offhand slot. For this, though, we're actually going to have to go into the tags of the item. So if I go ahead and write tag, and these are the specific parameters that we actually gave to the item, things like its name, its enchantments, and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and say tag, and then a few more brackets. Oh, and make sure you add a comma uh, between your different parameters here. All right, now within tag, uh, the first thing that we have on our item is the name. So we want to go into the display section of the item uh, with another colon and another two brackets. And this is where it starts to get really messy. Don't worry, I'll have all these commands down in the paste bin. I think it's important to learn uh, and to create these via repetition so you can at least know what you're doing in the future. But for now, if you just want to copy and paste these commands from paste bin just to test if they work, feel free to do so and skip ahead in the video. All right, after display comes name. And then because the next could be an array of text, we will have our single quotation marks right there on either side. And within that, we will put another set of curly brackets because now we're actually editing the text array within the name. Now, first, we want to check the actual text value of the name so we can set up text like that. And because that's a string, we need it in our double quotes. And we'll put our little colon. And we named our magma cream the... Lame guard bubble. Again, this is a string, so it also has to be put in double quotes. And we can't just stop there because we actually altered more than just the text of the flame guard bubble. We also edited the color of the name. If I add a comma, we're still within the name parameter here. We'll add our double quotes again as this is a string. We can say color, another colon. And our color was light underscore purple, according to MC Stacker. So there we go. Okay, luckily we're done with the name, but we still have to go over the lore. So we can get out of the array for the name, but we're still in the display, so we'll put a comma after that, and we will write lore with another colon. And this one could be a large array of items because we'll have several lines, so we want some square brackets, and within that, our first set of curly brackets. Now, again, because these could be an array of text items, we want our single quotes just outside the curly brackets. And then same as before, we'll start with text. We said provides fire resistance like that and our double quotes there luckily we didn't color this one so we don't have to change the color now that is our first text but we did create another line so just jumping out of this uh text array here we'll put a comma open up another text array with two single quotes and then another set of curly brackets this indicates that it's actually on its own line and for our final time we will write text and we said offhand item now, it's really important to make sure that all of this is case sensitive. If you accidentally write a lowercase here and your magma cream has an uppercase, then it will not detect the right magma cream. Okay, now we're pretty close to the end, but if you remember, there was one more thing we added to our magma cream to make it unique, and that was the enchantment glint. So if we move to this text array, we are getting just to the outside of lore, which is that little uh, box right there. And if we move out one more, that should be just outside of the display tag. So now, because we're still in the tags of this item, we'll go ahead and put a comma to add another tag now that we're out of display. And this next tag is the enchantments tag. Um, and just like I showed you on MC Stacker, this is a set of square brackets indicating that there could be loads of enchantments, but it's just an empty enchantment. So you can go ahead and put a set of empty curly brackets. This will just give it the glint. And your end of the line should look something like this. So if any of your brackets messed up and you want to pause the video here, this is what the end of your whole line should look like. Now, I know that was a lot, but we made it through. We put every single parameter of our item in that command block. Again, you don't have to do this. You could work on maybe just the name or maybe just put in the fact that it is enchanted. But the less specific you become, the more your players could exploit this. Believe me, running these tests on servers just proves that people will go to any length to mimic epic or legendary items. But now, what happens, we'll pick up this magma cream again, I'll put it in my offhand, and if I press the button, it does not ring true anymore. But if I go ahead and swap for the flame guard, it still says true. 
That's because all of our aspects of this, uh, oh, or not that one, of this flame guard bubble, we have written into this command block now. So now only this very specific one, and any clones of it that other players may have, will rang true when we're looking for it in the player's inventory. So that was just sort of a mini tutorial on how to detect for specific items because you will very much need that skill in pretty much anything you're doing when it comes to advanced command blocks. Uh, whether it's our boss tutorial later on or even the previous pumpkin boss tutorial, I use this a lot, like with the hopper detecting the certain slots and things like that. So this is a very, very important thing to know. But now that we've done that, we can move on to actually giving the magma cream some functionality. So if we come back over here, we can just control A, control C to copy it all. We'll come into this repeating command block here, set it to be always active and repeating, and we will just paste the whole thing. Now, you'll know if I actually hit done here and put this in my offhand, this just does what this command block was doing, but on repeat. Uh, we don't need to do that. But as you can see, we're getting closer to the functionality as now we have something that happens all the time when it's in my offhand. But what we don't need is the text saying true all the time. What we want is to run the effect command and we want to give at S, which is the player that we've already checked earlier, the one that's holding this offhand item. Now that could be anyone, multiple players on your server, a single player, no player, but that player or players that's holding this magma cream, that's what at S means. And we're going to give them fire resistance, like we said from the beginning. And just for a couple more parameters, we will give it to them for two seconds uh, with an amplifier of zero. We don't need it to be any stronger. And we are definitely hiding those particles. And I will click done. Okay. Now for the moment of truth. We already know that we can detect this specific magma cream in our offhand. Can we also make sure the player has fire resistance for as long as they hold it in their offhand? Well, I have it in my normal hand and I don't have any effects. But if I go ahead and press F... You'll notice the chat is thoroughly spammed, but if I hit inventory, sure enough, we have fire resistance and it's currently flickering between one or two. So this is just a quick time to note, uh, when you are messing around with stuff like this, whether you are an operator or you're working on stuff on your server, it's probably a good idea to turn command block output game rule to false. So you're not constantly spammed with these chats of your repeating items. For our purposes though, I will keep them on because we will actually need to see if things are successful or if they fail. But if I go ahead and press F, those chat messages will eventually disappear. And so will my fire resistance after just two seconds. I'll show you that again. F to take it out of my hand, and it just counts down. Now that's the reason why we just give the player two seconds of fire resistance, because pretty much as soon as they take the trinket off of their offhand, maybe to swap to another one, we actually want that to end. So it's only effective while they're holding it. Conversely, we could change this to be, I think, whatever the max is, uh, 990, yeah, like that. Uh, six nines in a row like that. We go ahead and hit done and I press F. You'll notice it actually looks a lot better now. It's not flickering. We have these nice stars. It's like we have it for infinite time. The issue, of course, then becomes if we take off the flame guard bubble. While it still looks really nice, we just have permanent flame resistance. <laughs> so your players could just swap all their trinkets in and out really quickly, get every potion effect under the sun, and not actually have to worry about keeping one in their shield slot. So unfortunately, unless you want that functionality for some reason, uh, we are going to go back and just set it to be two seconds. And that's a good place to wrap up for this second part. So in this part, we learned that you can not only make trinket offhand loot, but you also don't have to stick to things like giving it max health or increasing your movement speed. You can actually have potion effects be applied to the player when they're holding something in their offhand. So only one more part coming up after this, uh, and that is the hardest one where we learn to do a little bit extra with your inventory slots uh, for trinkets within Minecraft. But for today's video, that's going to do it. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like down in the video. It does help the channel out a lot consider subscribing if you like these type of tutorials. We're trying to make them a lot more often these days. Um, and yeah, until next time, guys. See ya!